Analyzing videos of your competitors is a vital tool to grow your channel. This way you'll understand what topics are trending, how to create titles and thumbnails that viewers click on, how to hold their attention, and so on. Research helps you to run your channel and avoid mistakes almost every small YouTuber makes. Hi, my name is Sina, and today we are going to talk about how to analyze videos of your competitors. When analyzing a video, follow these six steps. Number one, analyze the thumbnail. Thumbnails are the first thing viewers see on YouTube. It takes them less than three seconds to decide whether they would click on this video or not. Thus, an appealing thumbnails play a critical role in attracting new subscribers and getting more views. When conducted a research, pay attention to videos that gain the most views. Usually, these are the thumbnails that you're looking for. To analyze a thumbnail, ask these questions. Is this thumbnail intriguing and interesting? What makes it that way? Do you want to click on it? If yes, what makes you do this? What is the message behind the thumbnail? What visuals does it have? Emotion, text, graphics, something else? If there is a text, does it replicate the title? Or does it uncover the title, introducing the second topic of the video? or elaborating on the topic. Your goal is to understand what made the thumbnail so eye-catching and intriguing. Find some unusual captivating ideas or just elements of the thumbnail and create a table where you will put all this data. So, for example, a thumbnail you liked, ideas or elements that you can use in your thumbnails. Let me show you an example. I tapped invest in the search bar and this is the first video to appear. Now it has almost 500 views. The thumbnail is simple as you can see, but the first thing that catches my eye is burning dollars. Unfortunately, can you like point? <laughs> to this thumbnail with my mouse because the video starts playing. But anyways, the person is confused and this emotion together with burning money piqued my interest, so I looked at the title. To me, this is a great example of a good thumbnail. It intrigues and tells a story behind the video. Number two, analyzing the title. Titles are another essential aspect of increasing watch time, getting more views and, well, not so getting new subscribers because People subscribe after watching the videos, not after just clicking on the video. To analyze the title, answer these questions. Does the title contain keywords? If yes, what are they? Is the title intriguing? If so, what make it that way? How does it correspond to the thumbnail? Now let's look at our example. The title is very appealing, as everyone tells us to constantly invest, but Andre tells us otherwise, don't invest. He also elaborates that there is going to be a recession. After looking at the title and the thumbnail, I realized that if I continue to invest, I might lose money. That's not what I want, so I click on the video to watch it and understand what to do next. Again, this is a fascinating title and it works perfectly together with this thumbnail. Number three, analyze the description. Description is significant because it helps viewers to find a video through a YouTube search. Therefore, try to include suitable and relevant keywords in your description. Analyzing the description answer these questions. What did they write in the description? After reading the description, are you eager to watch or continue watching the video? If so, what picked your interest? What keywords did they use? Are they in high demand? Do they have high search volume? You can find out it by using VidIQ or TubeBuddy or some other extensions. Or you can simply write this keyword into the search bar, YouTube search bar, and see how many results do you get. If they use timestamps, check how they wrote them. Timestamps should also contain keywords and they should be gripping. Now let's look at our example. I won't write the similar description for my channel just because I almost don't have any subscribers and for me it is essential to write keywords at the beginning of the description. In Andrea's case, he definitely benefits more from posting affiliate links at first rather than from writing what this video is about, because he has more than 2 million subscribers and he makes a lot of money from affiliate marketing. I recently made a video about it and I took him as an example of how much you can make with affiliate marketing. I will leave a link to this video in the description box below. Let's continue analyzing this description. Then he elaborates on why we should stop investing. So he 
writes what his video is about. As for the keywords, he uses stop investing, investing, recession, some other keywords. If I would make a video on a similar topic, I would consider adding keywords at the beginning, but I already told you why I would do this and why he doesn't do this. I would also use some common and specific keywords like investing for beginners, investing for beginners 2022, investing in stocks, don't invest, investing in 2020 and some other keywords that I would research again using tools like uh, VidIQ, TubeBuddy and just searching on YouTube. And I also add timestamps so that it's easier to navigate to specific parts of the video. Number four, analyzing the video. The next thing you should pay attention to is analyzing the video. And while doing this, answer these questions. What does blogger say at the beginning of this video? Is their speech creeping? Do you want to continue watching this video after the intro? If so, analyze what they said or did to hold your attention. How is it edited? Is it dynamic? Are there some peculiarities like murals, graphics, overlay text? What does their settings look like? What lights do they use? If if you like their settings, you can consider doing something similar for yourself, but please don't invest all your money in the settings and gear. Yes, it's important, but it's not obligatory to do. Do they add end screens and info cards? If so, are they related to the video you're watching? You can also get some ideas from these suggested videos. Your goal here is to analyze what holds viewers' attention. Now let's go back to analyzing our example. This video is very dynamic. The frame is constantly changing. He even changes the settings, add bureaus, animating graphics, text, and many more things. Besides, you can't hear what he's saying now, but he really has a charisma and he can explain complex topics in a simple way. A wonderful example of how a video can be edited to hold viewers' attention. Number five, analyzing the comments. Reading the comments is a good way to understand your potential audience and what are their needs. You can check whether this topic is interesting for them and whether they want to know more about it. And you can also get more ideas for your videos from their comments. Let's look at the comments under this video. Most of the comments are positive and viewers leave their opinion on the topic. And back to continue shooting similar videos. Some of them ask to make videos on specific topics, for example, dividend stocks. If I had an investing blog, I'd consider this suggestion. Number six, analyze the video performance using VideoQ or TubeBuddy, or any other extension you like. VDQ is a website and there is also an extension that helps you to run your YouTube channel. It provides different analytics and statistics regarding your channel or other channel depending on what package you use in VDQ. It has several packages. The basic ones used for some basic analytics. If you want to compare your channel to other channels, it's better to buy Pro or Boost package. To analyze the video, use a scorecard that is located to the right of the video. It has several categories – overview, social engagement, SEO feedback, and some other. You can check them all, as a lot of them useful, but I advise you to pay attention to these metrics. Views per hours VPH. It demonstrates how many views per hour gets the video. Sometimes, even if a video was published a year ago, for example, it may start again getting lots of views. And if it see that this is happening and this is the topic of your channel, think of a way of making a video on this topic just because it is trending and trends change fast, so you'd better be hurry. Next is Views Velocity Comparison tool. It allows you to analyze a video performance. You can use it to grasp how many views this video got since it was published. This way you can see the audience reaction to this video. So for example, if the video got a lot of views at the first few days and then the amount of views started to slowly decline and now it, this video doesn't get any views. That means that this topic was interesting only for subscribers of this channel. It often happens with vlogs. We are interested to watch someone's vlog even if we like kind of those people, so we are interested in their life. But strangers, well, we are strangers to bloggers, but still, like we watch their video constantly and we feel like we are friends. But uh, if someone who doesn't know this person yet 
they won't be interested in watching box. But if there is another trend, so the video at first got a uh, little amount of views and then it started getting more views, that means that this topic wasn't interesting for the subscribers of this channel, but then YouTube found an audience that is interested in this particular topic and started to recommend it, this video to them and the video started gaining more views. The next one is tags. Tags are descriptive keywords that YouTubers use to help, kind of help, viewers to find the videos through YouTube search. And here is the thing, YouTube says that there is no point in adding keywords, adding tags, unless the keywords you're using in your videos are often misspelled or spelled in a different ways. So, for example, uh, the word e-commerce can be spelled in two different ways. So there is a point in adding tags, e-commerce in one word and e-commerce like e-space commerce, just because people can spell this word in different ways and in order all of them to find your videos, you add those tags. But if uh, you're talking about something that can't be, well, everything can be misspelled, but you know what I mean. There is no point in adding text, because YouTube is really good in understanding what is your video about. It can understand what are you talking about, and it also can understand what do you write on screen during your videos. Now, let's see how many views is this video getting. So here is this video, and now it is getting 40 views per hour. And if we compare this video to his other video, we can see that the video that he published earlier, these two videos now aren't getting any views, this video got only one view for the last hour, the video that he published later, also no views, no views, four, one, four views. This video is great, uh, we can see that Fire performs great on his thumbnails, so yeah, also as an idea to use. Now, let's go back to his video. We can open here. And let's watch these other metrics. So here we can compare views in the first 28 days. And as you can see, at the first day, he got 42,000 views. On the second, much, much more, 273,000 views, and then 329,000 uh, views in total. So. But still, I think mostly who watched his video was were his subscribers, because then he almost, well, yeah, he's getting some views, but the number of views doesn't increase too much. And here we could have compared this video views to this channel average amount of views, uh, but we can't, because we have, um, I have basic package on this channel, but if I upgrade it to, I need to upgrade it to boost to be able to compare it. But still you can compare this video number of views to your channel average. And if you're analyzing a video of your competitor, it totally makes sense. And now let's look at text. He uses a lot of them. And here, let's see, for example, recession. Oh, low competition and search volume <laughs> existing. Uh, on VTQ, it doesn't show you is it high, low or medium search volume, but still we can see the amount of them. And let's see that Recession 22 also has low competition, but it has three ti four times, four times less amount of search volume. So it's better to use Recession, so he does everything right here. And Stock Market has also low competition and almost 2 million search volume. Let's check whether he uses this keyword. And yes, he uses it, so everything is great. But he runs now only at his channel names and only 41. Uh, maybe, I guess after he published this video, and he published this video May 15th, so two months ago, I guess he was ranking not only at this uh, keywords at others too. So these six steps are the bare minimum I advise 
you to do when you analyze videos of your competitors. You can also check channel performance using Social Blade, instead of VDQ you can use TubeBuddy and so on. It's all up to you. I recommend you to do such research when you're just starting on YouTube, when you have a small amount of subscribers and if your channel stopped growing. Choose videos that were recently published and gained more views, analyze them and start acting. Running a YouTube channel is hard, but it is absolutely worth it. Don't give up, upload videos, constantly improve them and results will come. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please put thumbs up and write it in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out these videos and I'll see you in my next ones. Bye!